What if I told you that we are actually, in fact, in a sidearm meta? No, no, that sounds crazy. Cross, what are you smoking? But we are getting so very close. And if Bungie actually does nerf special ammo, even more so than what they've already done, because they're talking about it, they've already stated that if special weapon kills don't slow down this season, that they were going to be taking more drastic measures. And if that happens, we are 100% in a sidearm meta. Now, with that being said, this particular sidearm, Drang, is already meta. It is one of the most dominating weapons in the game. It wrecks in both PvE and in PvP, and on top of all of this, it is craftable this season. With options like enhanced moving targets, enhanced eye of the storm, enhanced zen moment, enhanced incandescent, and a variety of other roles that turns this super rangy sidearm into almost a mini hand cannon. Now, some things to outline about Drain. Number one, it's a 300 round per minute sidearm. This actually has an optimal time to kill of 0.6 seconds if you hit four crits, and honestly, the best time to kill among sidearms. This particular archetype being adaptives. It's neck and neck with that of Trespasser, and we know how deadly Trespasser is. But what makes Drang separate from the pack is that super good range. That range, with 14 zoom, has a hell of a lot of reach. We're talking if you rocked a max range roll with the range masterwork, 19.2 meters that this sidearm can reach up to. Even a max range roll peace bot with both range finder, iron reach, and a range masterwork, full bore accurate rounds, even that sidearm can't even reach 19 meters. So the fact that Drang can pull that off is incredible. What's even more incredible is the fact that you don't even have to rock full bore in order to reach 19 meters. You can simply rock hammer forge rifling and you're going to be sitting at a nice crispy 18.99 meters of absolute nasty. And fellas, if you can close the gap, Drang will literally destroy anything in front of you. And I know somebody's going to be like, Cross, you're really trying to sell this sidearm meta thing? Dude, I'm not. Like, if you don't get it after this video, you will eventually get it because this thing can chew. Now, being that this is a two-part weapon, as it comes with the intrinsic perk together forever. This weapon is not only an adaptive frame, reliable and sturdy, but it also works with Sturm. And every single kill with Drain gives a supercharged bullet to Sturm. And the synergy here between both of these is very, very good. Even inside a PVE, and I know I'm not using it inside a PVE, but you can use Sturm inside a PVE and it's still very good. My only complaint right now about sidearms this season is not that sidearms are bad. Hell, Drain would be perfect for PVE content. It's the fact that anti-barrier sidearm is not working. Hence why the majority of this gameplay is PvP. Now, being a new weapon, Drang also comes with the excess origin trait, where final blows of the weapon while your super is full will grant bonus to strength and discipline for a moderate duration, essentially adding on 20 discipline and 20 strength for a full 12 seconds. And of course, this actually pairs with this artifact mod for this season, which also boosts this even more. Now, let me go over the roles that we tried with Drang. And by the way, I spent so many materials on this thing because for some unknown reason, I had to try out pretty much every one of these enhanced traits. First up, before we get too deep into the PvP roles, I do want to point out disruption break on this sidearm when anti-barrier sidearm actually gets fixed is fantastic. And not only is it even better here, but the enhanced version gives an improved duration to that increase in kinetic damage, which by the way is 50% more damage. You want to talk about a great pairing with a horde? Disruption break drain. Talk about disgusting. And something like disruption break vorpal. Oh, it's meant to take down champions. But I actually want to steer you toward the perk incandescent. Defeating a target spreads Scorch to those nearby, and more powerful combatants and opposing guardians cause Scorch in a larger radius. Now granted, the enhanced version spreads a longer lasting Scorch to those nearby. Now even though this perk does synergize fantastically well with Solar 3.0, a lot of people look at Incandescent as only a PvE perk, not really something to utilize inside of PvP. But I can tell you inside of PvP, it's pretty nice, if not for just the satisfaction of watching your opponent blow up, but also if you have groups of opponents next to each other, that Incandescent chains very nicely there. And if you're rocking certain fragments, which of course increases Scorch applied, this is even better. Now, I also want to look at Zim Moments. We did play with Zim Moments, and the enhanced version is actually pretty interesting because not only does it quote-unquote increase stability as you deal damage, but it also improves base stability. Now, Zim Moment, at least confirmed in the past from certain developers, and you guys even reminded me a few weeks ago, you stated that Zim Moment only affects reticle shake and not necessarily the stability of the weapon. It's purely just visual. Therefore, the argument that I was making before on all stringer about stability being improved therefore the weapon would have a better shot at combating flinch is not necessarily the case there on top of that zim moment isn't a noticeable perk for mouse and keyboard users and this is someone who just tried it out i did not see a huge difference granted though it is nice on controller and let me just say drain is all around nice on controller like if you are a controller player why are you not using drain we were actually rocking zen moments and eye of the storm enhanced by the way and it was doing so well for controller eye of the storm kicking up that 
and accuracy and boosting that handling as your health went lower and zim moment leveling the weapon off just by dealing damage at least visually now i did change some things up and decided to try out enhance moving target this increases movement speed and improved target acquisition when moving while aiming down sights again the base version of this just increases target acquisition again enhance is actually an improved increase so even more so and that's really nice for moving target because passively it already grants 10 aim assists as well as that reduction there in movement speed while strafing and aiming down sights not really sure what the improved version of that is like is it 15 aim assists regardless though it was putting in work moving target was something noticeable on both mouse and keyboard and on controller it was snagging shots and even though i of the storm was really really nice i actually found moving target to be better we also played with swashbuckler where the weapon gains increased damage for an improved duration from melee final blows as well as of course defeating targets with the weapon swashbuckler is really nice with the sidearm especially if you do like to run around and get like a shoulder charge off on an enemy boom you could suddenly have swashbuckler times five we're talking 33 percent more damage which is easy three taps here with drain which by the way drops that time to kill value down to 0.4 seconds the only sidearm to beat that is of course trespasser granted there's some setup here you got to get a melee kill off or of course five kills with the sidearm to chain those swashbuckler stacks but really really guys getting swashbuckler times five with a melee base build is really not that difficult to do and on top of that once you get that melee kill off like the moment i get a melee kill off i'm like yo it's time to pound and you just start shredding so what is the gun role for this weapon personally guys hammer forge rifling accurate rounds moving target and zen moment for my controller players i think just choosing that and going for stupid consistency is extremely nasty for my mouse and keyboard players though look i actually really like that swashbuckler role moving target though is still fantastic definitely think you should go that route at the same time i like incandescent you're applying scorch to enemies you're pairing it with solar 3.0 this was actually a very fun trait and i'm actually thinking about rocking an ash and weight combo with this with incandescent and before somebody says no you can't do that please don't poop on my parade i'm gonna try to make it work but even running a melee based build with swashbuckler or even trying out rampage is still not a bad option again though for me i'm mouse and keyboard incandescent swashbuckler those are the two that i like the most for pve players though i do think that disruption break vorpal is fantastic and if not that rock incandescent and maybe wellspring this is a cool combination where every single final blow is giving you that improved ability energy with the enhanced version and in solo 3.0 that's going to be extremely nasty either way it goes guys drain is a fantastic weapon to use it is definitely part of the meta if not the meta you're going to find yourself in situations where you feel overwhelmed when going up against a good drain user especially depending on their input there were times where a controller literally aimed the weapon for me and it almost felt in some way similar to that of last work and if you guys remember back inside of destiny one year three what was the meta inside of rumble sign arms sign arms were the meta even right before special ammo got nerfed sign arms started to become the meta inside of rumble granted we had a lot of other primary weapons that had been nerfed but i would argue and say even against last word drain can go head to head against controller versus controller personally though drain is one of my favorites i love pairing it with sturm just to see those overcharge shots by the way sturm such a good hand cannon don't sit on it easily get the two taps once you get sturm overcharge this is a great combo but you are at risk especially against people that like to rock shotguns and do happen to close the gap unfortunately with the in-air changes to airborne effectiveness there were times that i did take to the air with drain and my shots were whiffing surprisingly shotguns are still somehow fairly accurate while airborne but if bungie ever gets around to fixing airborne effectiveness giving us more ways to build into it and you have the ability to bait and of course take to the air when backing up from opponents drain will absolutely shred anything trying to rush you guys get this weapon again it requires five deep sights to get this thing feel free to check out our guide on how to unlock these weapons and of course the ability to craft that god god roll well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right <laughs>